Hey, listeners, welcome back to another episode of the Robin Graham Show. Today, we are going to have a really interesting conversation. We are going to talk about you trusting yourself and trusting the value of your story and your journey to get you to where you are today. And from there, we're going to launch into archetypes for personality archetypes, I guess you would say, to help what is the best way, the best solution for video content for you, for your personality and for your business. So it's going to be very interesting. And I'm super happy that I get to dive in and share any with you today, because I think this conversation is going to both educate, enlighten, but also help you have more confidence with putting yourself out into the world using video content, which we hear so much about and hear so much about the power of it. All right. Without further ado, I'm going to bring Emmy Wu on to the Robin Graham show. Welcome. Thank you, Robin. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So we're on two different coasts today, two different kinds of weather, but it's a perfect day to connect and help other people learn more about creating video and tapping into their own self, their own, their gut intuition, and just trusting that their story, their journey is worth sharing so that they can attract their audience. So this is a topic that I love, and I'm really happy that we're diving into it today. So I'm going to have you, if you would, please just tell the listeners a little bit about you and how you got to where you are in your journey to help other entrepreneurs use video as a tool to tell their story. Yeah, absolutely. So I think since I was a little girl, I've always been very inspired by telling stories with the moving picture. I remember even just like pouring over my dad's National Geographic and like fantasizing about making documentaries about tribes in the Amazon. And so that passion of storytelling and of learning about different people and cultures and ways of being carried through. And so when I finished university, I dove immediately into trying to get into the film ministry, which I did and eventually started coordinating projects for MGM, Paramount, Disney even coordinated two, three seasons of Real Housewives of Vancouver, (laughs) but that's a separate show altogether. And then I eventually met a boy that I fell in love with and I'm Canadian and he's American. So when the idea came that maybe I would be moving to the U.S. and being with him, the thought occurred to me that I guess I could just try and get a media job there, you know, or I could try my hand at teaching what I know about video technology, about storytelling to entrepreneurs, to people who are soul driven, mission driven. And that's what I did. And I guess, yeah, the rest is history. I love it so much. And you're a very passionate person and your passion is showing right now on the video for the listeners who watch this later on YouTube, but it's amazing how so much of our stories lead us to where we are in the present moment and your passions for the environment, conservation, animals, and all of these things have brought you to where you are today. In addition to that desire to serve and help other people, like you could have gone and probably right away had a really great job, had benefits, had all these things, but you chose to help other people. And I think that passion for serving comes through in all of that. And maybe you agree, but I think that Oftentimes as entrepreneurs, we forget that side of who we are and how important that is to tell our audience and how much of a connection that can actually build for us. Would you agree? Absolutely. And thank you for saying that because sometimes it's not until somebody else tells you, even as you're talking, I'm like, you're right because of that passion. I was able to travel to places like the Amazon in Peru and to Mongolia and to these really cool places that my projects have taken me that I never would have had an opportunity to do had I just gone and done the media job. And I think that's very true for everyone that sometimes we don't even think about or we underestimate the value of our own story and our own experiences to connect with other people. 
But I think we also have to remember that and at the end of the day, on the other side of that Instagram avatar, on the other side of that Facebook profile is another human being. And ultimately we are social creatures. We connect since the dawn of time through stories. So being able to share where you come from just gives your audience not only an opportunity to get to know you better, but to also resonate with you on a deeper level, because chances are they probably share some of the similar experiences and challenges that you have as well. Yeah, absolutely. And it's amazing to me how many times you say something and somebody says, oh my gosh, me too. That's so amazing. Yeah. And here you may have been acquaintances for a long time and never knew that connection was there because we're oftentimes afraid to express some of those interests or those passions out of, I don't know, self-doubt or fear. But let's talk a little bit about that because one of the things that you're passionate about is not only helping other people tell their story through video, but to trust themselves. And I think before we can present ourselves effectively on video, we do have to trust ourselves. We have to decrease that level of self-doubt that we have about putting ourselves out into the public via video, but we also have to trust our gut intuition and what that voice inside of us is saying. So I would love for you to touch on that. And then we can dive into the archetypes, the personality types that will help influence where we decide to showcase videos of ourselves. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like, especially when it comes to video, having that sense of self-doubt, not really liking how we look, how we sound, even how we express our ideas on video is a very natural and normal thing in the beginning of the journey. Not many of us have been in front of the camera. Unless you have a background in journalism, I'm willing to bet that most of us have not done that, myself included. I spent my entire career behind the camera. So when it came time for me to put myself in front of the camera, Whoa, that was a completely different story. And I remember, and I still have those very first blog videos up because I think it's valuable to show people the trajectory of my journey and how inhibited and afraid and even how I presented my ideas on camera is completely different from how I am now. But allow yourself to start, allow yourself to become obsessed with that bigger picture, with your bigger mission, rather than looking at ourselves and thinking, how do I make so many funny faces when I talk or my hair? Oh my goodness. Like <laughs> I should not be making video like that. And yet that's the common sentiment that I hear very often. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important for us to, despite the doubt, despite the uncomfortable feeling of seeing ourselves and putting ourselves out there to still trust that we all have to start from somewhere. And no matter where you are, there are going to be people that you resonate with because it's not just how you present yourself on camera, but like you said, Robin, it's your story. It's everything about who you are that comes through as well. Yeah, I love that. And, and I want to assure listeners that your story has meaning and you may think that things don't matter because they're yours or because you went through them, but every single step of your journey has led you to where you are today. And if you think of it as a magnet, if God has given you a calling and a purpose and skills to help other people, there is someone else out there who has that same need. And that need is just waiting for you to come or that person is waiting for you to just come and fulfill that need for them. So if you think about it, putting yourself out there as video is almost like that magnet. You're going to attract those people that are going to truly resonate with you. They're going to trust you because they see who you are and they see your passion and they can feel those emotions coming through the screen at them. So just keep that in mind that if you're feeling that sense of self-doubt, that your story isn't of value, remember that it really and truly is and start to reframe that in your mind as a means of trusting that your journey was worth every single bit of grit and grind and muck that you went through because now you can help somebody else who's going through that, what you've already been through. Okay. So I just had to say that. So let's talk about these archetypes because I'm so curious. Yeah. So along my journey of teaching video and being on video and helping my clients to be on video, 
one predominant kind of complaint I hear is that it's just overwhelming. I don't even know where to start. If I'm getting on video, do I now have to make all these TikToks or do I have to start a YouTube channel and start cranking out content all the time? And my answer to that is absolutely not. In some ways, I'm like a lazy entrepreneur. I like to work smarter and not harder. And so I developed this framework, the archetypes of video magnetism, and it helps you to not only assess where your true skills and where you can lead from, because we always want to lead with our strengths. And these archetypes, once we go through them, chances are you'll be able to identify yourself as one, maybe two of them, which will help you to, to define which types of videos are actually best for your personality and your business model. So you don't have to stress about making videos that feel hard, feel stressful, because guess what? If they feel super hard and stressful, they're probably not really your style anyways. So it just really helps you ultimately to feel free in the process and most like you. And that's ultimately what makes you magnetic. 100%. Okay. So what's the first one? Yeah. So the first archetype is the lover. And before I even get into all of them, I just want to say that as humans, we are going to be all four archetypes, right? We're 360, we're multidimensional. So we're going to be all four of these archetypes. But as I go through them, see which one resonates with you the most and just trust that gut feeling that's going to be your archetype. Okay. So the lover is all about creativity, is all about self expression. They're all about desire and all their actions are in alignment with high self-worth. So lovers are like you, coaches who help their clients to step into their most aligned, authentic, expressed selves. They can be dancers, artists, anybody who is really all about self-expression and creativity. So part of the uniqueness of the lover archetype is your natural ability to convey your magnetism in your element. So you actually don't need to plan this very well thought out structured video where you're like teaching these key points. Chances are, if you're a lover, that won't feel very natural for you anyways. It's actually best for you when you feel inspired, just pick up that phone, do your live stream. It's your raw, authentic, messy, vulnerable shares that are actually most aligned with how you like to show up anyways. And that's also what makes you magnetic to your audience because it's that quality where if they can see your heart as you truly are, they're just smitten by you. Okay, we can just stop right there. You just described me. No. <laughs> It's a beautiful archetype. It's such a beautiful archetype. Seriously, though, I am not that person that if I have everything mapped out and a list that I need to make sure I touch on, I panic because then I want to make sure that I have it perfectly. And so I'm so much better when I fly by the seat of my pants per se, like I'll have everything like bullet points in my head, so to speak, that I want to make sure I hit on, but I'm so much better when I'm just me and not scripted. Yes. And that is the quality of the lover. And I think something to go back to the beginning of the conversation about not really giving ourselves enough credit, lovers sometimes don't give themselves enough credit for being able to actually express their ideas. They tend to label themselves, especially when it comes to video as really unscripted, unplanned, I ramble, I'm messy all over the place. And yeah. I really shouldn't be like that. But that's just a story that we've put upon ourselves that doesn't need to be there at all. In fact, when you are like really in the flow of just being you, that's when people are like, yes, I want to keep listening to her. Yeah. I love that. And you literally just described me to a T all those things you just said, those doubts that creep in and yeah, that's me too. Okay. So what's number two. Okay. So the second archetype is the sovereign. So the sovereign is one that has a clear vision of what 
is going to happen. They're the ones that make a clear plan. They make decisions with ease and certainty. And sovereigns are natural teachers. They're natural guides. So opposite from the lover, the sovereign is great at teaching. So sovereigns are probably actually going to be most comfortable when they have structure. <laughs> they love having first I hit this bullet point, then I have to go through these ideas because it allows them to lean back on what are these ideas that I'm teaching, that I'm conveying, that I'm guiding people through, which is their natural strength. So for sovereigns, even formats like webinars can be really aligned with sovereign types or more like educational type videos where you're guiding your audience towards helping them to make a decision. And then once they make a decision, how are we going to then build that plan to then execute on that? And when sovereigns can use video to really showcase their natural gifts in teaching, in guiding, naturally the people who need that guidance who want that clear instruction are going to be magnetized to them so for sovereigns it's probably going to feel really unnatural for them to just riff unlike the lover where that is their strength sovereigns will likely freeze they won't know what to say unless they have those bullet points. So it's okay. Allow yourself to have that structure because what's most important is your way of teaching, of guiding, of helping your audience to make decisions and to execute on that plan. Love it. Love it. Okay. Number three. And it's funny because you said a lot of us are all types. I do love to teach and I do I do sometimes have those bullet points and stuff like that, but if I'm going to go live and it's just like spur of the moment, something just came to me, that creativity just spurred something that I want to share, that's going to be the lover. But then occasionally if I'm doing a masterclass, the sovereign kicks in. Okay. I love this. This is so fun. Okay. Number three. Number three. So the third archetype is the magician. And just like the name conveys, the magician is responsible for bringing ideas, raw materials into the world and turning them into value, turning them into beauty, turning them into beautifully orchestrated events. So your magician archetype is in action. When you think of that amazing idea and you turn that into a video series or a lead magnet, or you have this amazing download of inspiration and you transform that into an offer, that's your magician kind of in action. So magician archetypes, they they tend to be the people who can take this like chaos of ideas or even whole ideas seemingly from nowhere and turn them into events, into online events, turn it into, say, for example, food bloggers, raw materials, turning them into beautiful meals and pieces of art. Similar to the lover, the magician can also be artists. So many artists, many coaches can be this like lover magician hybrid as well. And magicians are truly the archetype that just doesn't care what other people say or think. They know the value of what they bring into the world, even if it seems to make no sense to the outside world. So one of the qualities about the magician that really woos their audience is their seemingly magical abilities to make these amazing dishes, make these amazing works of art, create these incredible events and experiences that blow people away. And their audience is like, how the heck do you even come up with these ideas? Like, how do you put them together? And so part of the magician's magnetism is actually showing people the step-by-step -step of how do you create that magic? They can be the ones that really show people the step-by-step -step of this is how I mix my paints. Then I do this and this actually creates this. So beautiful video styles for magicians can be time lapses where you show people the progression of your work coming to life. You can even do like behind the scenes, just showing people a glimpse of what do you actually do behind there? How do you create that magic? And any time where you can just allow your audience to have a little bit of a glimpse into your process, 
that is really letting your magnetism shine. Love that. Okay. And number four. And the final archetype is the warrior. So the warrior is one that really takes a stand for what they believe in, what they value. And even if for other people, it might seem like an uphill battle and I wouldn't touch that with a 10 foot pole, the warrior finds a way. The warrior is one who is determined to create solutions, to make the world a better place. And the beautiful quality about warriors is that they are natural ralliers. They will naturally get people excited behind an idea where they're like, yes, I want to do this too. I want to participate. How do I join and get behind this mission, this message. So the interesting quality about the warrior is their innate ability to convey, to communicate, and to because of their skills, their interpersonal skills, and being able to rally people behind a cause, they can actually leverage their community and network almost as a in a monetary way. They have this beautiful network that people trust them because they're so forthright about what they believe in, what they stand for. And just because of how forthright they are, they have this natural ability to build alliances and people just trust them because what they say is what's going to happen. So beautiful video styles for warriors are like this, where you're doing interviews, where you're asking questions and leveraging your audience, your network, other people to really get behind your message, your cause, but also having this diversity of other ideas, other voices coming into play. So like warriors, like magicians as well, you have this innate ability to say, I believe in this. And then all of a sudden you rallied like this whole community behind an idea. So being able to show people, how do you do that? How do you convince people who think this is an uphill battle to now be like on board? So anytime where you can tell people, share people a bit about your process and the passion that goes behind, that's really showcasing your magnetism as a warrior. So those are the four archetypes. Okay. So we've got the lover, the sovereign, the magician, and the warrior. So when we talk about, so you talked about the magician and really having like creating events and then the warrior, very similar, the sovereign, you actually talked a little bit about webinars, I think. Uh so when we talk about the types of video in terms of like platforms, like I'm thinking in terms of TikTok videos, reels on Instagram, live videos, and then maybe masterclasses and trainings, which could be considered webinars. They could be like live masterclasses in a Facebook group, anything like that. So how do, or then you have the YouTube channel and it could be interviews like what we're doing right now. So which archetype goes with which one of those platforms? Yeah. So that's a great question. And I wish I could just give you a one-off answer, but it is a little bit more multi-layered because I think for all archetypes and all entrepreneurs, the first thing to ask yourself when you're choosing a platform is where is my audience? Is my ideal audience actually hanging out on YouTube? Are they actually hanging out more on TikTok? Or maybe they're actually on Facebook. We wouldn't naturally think of Facebook as a video platform, but I've actually built my entire business on Facebook using a mix of pre recorded videos and Facebook lives to really engage with my audience. So once you've established where your audience is and you can select a platform to get started on, and I would say, especially when you're getting started, don't stress yourself out by trying to be on TikTok and YouTube and Facebook and all these platforms at once. Choose one and master that. Put your love, attention, focus into really learning that platform and engaging with your audience there. And you'll know when it's time to expand onto other platforms. So say, for example, over an archetype decides to put out a series of amazing educational videos that are maybe a little bit longer form, 20 minutes or so on YouTube. 
that's not to say that they can't also have amazing success teaching on Facebook Live using that same educational structure. So I think what's important here is, yes, the platform is important to know where you're going to make the most traction from your efforts, but also know that it's the actual video itself and not the platform that's going to help you to stand out. I love that. And as you were talking, the one thing that kept coming to mind is repurposing. Like we can repurpose this interview. Obviously it's going on the podcast, which is audio, but it will be on YouTube. So people can go watch it. I'll share that link to Facebook. I'll share that link to Instagram. The There's so many ways you can repurpose video. We can take little narrow snippets of this 60 second snippets, and then we can put those in the Instagram feed. So there's so many different ways that you can repurpose video. You can use it on your blog. You can embed the YouTube code there and embed it for a blog post. There's just so many things that you can do with video and then more people can see you and really get a feeling for your personality and create that or build that emotional connection with you that you need in order to build relationships and then build your community. So you have number one, more people to sell to you, but number two, more opportunities for people to buy from you. Absolutely. And thank you for bringing up the thing about repurposing, which is so important. And it also reminds me of the difference between pre-recorded videos and live videos, which is a very important distinction that I always want everybody to know about. Personally, love live videos because it's so easy, right? You just pull out your smartphone and hit go live, and there you are. You're able to connect with people on the other side of the planet, whereas pre-recorded can be a little bit more complex. You got to download the footage, and then there's the editing, and then it's more of a multi-step process. But... It's really important to remember that every single social platform, their goal is to get the user to stay on that platform for as long as possible. So if you are just starting out and say you don't even have an audience yet, I would actually start with pre-recorded videos. Why? Because most social platforms treat pre-recorded videos as legacy content, meaning you can promote it months down the line or even years down the line, and you will still continue getting the same amount of, maybe not exactly same amount, but you'll still continue to get traction and visibility from that one piece of content. Whereas live video, the platform platform treats it differently. It's built for engagement. So if you are going to go live, make sure you email your list, you tell your audience, I'm going live at this time, come join me. Because if you're consecutively going live without any comments, without any engagement, and nobody's interacting with you, you're essentially telling the algorithm my content isn't any good, nobody's engaging with it. So it's actually going to suppress your organic reach. So that's something really important to consider depending on where you are in your journey. You can start with that pre-recorded content, get a little bit of practice and then move into live video or rally your friends, rally your network to come join you live. And then you can also then upload that live video into YouTube, repurpose it and just really get a lot more traction out of that one piece of content. So thank you for bringing that up. Yeah. And I think repurposing is key for just simplicity's sake and making your life easier as an entrepreneur because we do not want to complicate things. No, absolutely not. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is so much value here. I love this conversation and I'm so grateful you were here. How can the listeners connect with you, learn more from you, maybe even work with you? Yeah, absolutely. So they can go to my website. That's just emmywoo.com. Or you can find me across the socials, Instagram, Facebook, all of that at emmywoo media. Okay. That's easy to remember. I love when people's names are a part of their business because then so easy to recognize. Okay. Thank you so much for being here. And listeners, if you found value in this episode, I'm going to ask a huge favor. Will you please number one, share it on social media so that more people will be able to discover it and learn from Emmy. This is such valuable information. And video is one of those things that can be 
I guess, can seem so complicated. And if we look at what Emmy has taught us today, it really simplifies who we are from a video perspective and how we can easily create videos that are going to resonate with our audience. Some of the content you can use in your videos, uh, you can tell your stories, you can do the behind the scenes, you can be very specific about who you work with. You can give tips and tools by a video. There's so many different options that you can do, but make sure please that you share this episode with friends, family on social media so that other people can find it. And if you feel so inclined, a rating and review would be so appreciated. All right. Without any more, I am going to say goodbye until next time. Bye.